Lincoln Electric has been involved in the wind energy industry from the beginning as a leader in revolutionary power sources, specially engineered consumables, and globally available technical support. Now, Lincoln's commitment to renewable energy is stronger than ever. At 443 feet from base to blade, Lincoln Electric's wind tower is among the largest urban freestanding wind towers in North America. It took over two years, 220 tons of steel, over 1,000 bolts, and dozens of people to put this structure together. But the first step took just a shovel. We're really pleased with the, just the prospects of this project and the idea that uh, we're putting a very large renewable uh, energy source in here at the plant. It's been a long journey, uh, but Lincoln Electric and all of our efforts together have brought this wind turbine to their campus and we can't wait to see it break the skyline. Though rain moved the groundbreaking ceremony indoors, the earth movers pushed through the mud to dig a hole big enough for a foundation 12 and a half feet deep and 56 feet wide. The gray skies remained while crews filled the base with 2 million pounds of concrete and 130,000 pounds of rebar. This set the stage for the wind tower, creating a base sturdy enough to hold the 800,000 pounds of steel. While crews in Cleveland readied the work site, another company in Nebraska prepared the work material. The tower that holds up the wind turbine is made up of long steel tubes called cans. Lincoln Electric's tower is composed of four cans, weighing up to 140,000 pounds each. Since Katana Summit had already been using Lincoln Electric consumables and equipment for years, they were the perfect choice to build the Lincoln Tower. The can manufacturing process starts with raw steel, which is rolled into cylinders and welded together. Internal components, such as a ladder and platform, are also welded onto the cans. After they are blast cleaned and painted, the cans are transported on a truck to their final destination. The trek from Nebraska to Cleveland is 900 miles, but the cans did not have the longest journey. The three blades, hub and nacelle, or generator, cross the Atlantic Ocean, starting in Germany and ending at the port of Cleveland. Though it was the shortest leg of the trip, the 15-mile drive from the port to Lincoln Electric's headquarters was the most difficult. At 158 and a half feet in length, each blade required two drivers, one in the front and one in the back, to navigate the crowded downtown streets. Transporting the cans also pose challenges. Each can is 14 feet in diameter, so low bridges, traffic lights, and telephone wires required frequent stops. Trucking these larger-than-life wind tower pieces through the Cleveland area announced to the local community that something big was on the way. As the blades and cans were unloaded, word spread that green energy was coming to Cleveland. Once all the pieces arrived at the Lincoln Electric campus, it was time to put the puzzle together. A special crane was brought in for the big job, and a second, shorter crane was used to help with the heavy lifting. Naturally, the assembly started with the base can, which is the heaviest of the four. Once bolted down, crews attached stairs leading to the door in the base. A ladder runs inside each can, essential for the wind tower construction and, when necessary, maintenance. The second and third cans were all stacked on day one of the erection. Each tower piece was lifted parallel to the ground by both cranes, then lifted vertically by the large crane. The bravest iron workers climbed the ladder inside the tower and waited at the top to bolt the cans together. The fourth and final can had to be attached the same day as the nacelle because the four cans stacked without the nacelle could create damaging harmonic frequencies. On the second build day, the last can was lifted and secured onto the tower with no problems. But the force that this structure is meant to harness delayed its progress. Fortunately, the wind calmed down just in time for a sunset lift. The final day of the erection started by attaching the three blades to the hub, which in wind turbine terms is called spiking the hub. The completed rotor stretched horizontally across the construction site as crews prepared for the last lift. When the wind speeds were right, it was time for the grand finale, lifting the hub and blades. 
Just like the cans, the rotor was lifted parallel to the ground by both cranes, then lifted straight up by the large crane. To keep it stable, crews tied ropes to each of the blades and secured them to trucks, playing a little tug of war with the wind. The hub went up without any problems and was bolted to the nacelle by iron workers who climbed over 300 steps to the top of the tower. With the addition of the blades, the wind tower reached its final height of 443 feet, becoming a fixture in Cleveland's landscape. After years of planning and four months of on-site building, Lincoln Electric can now produce 10% of its own annual energy needs. The wind tower serves as a physical symbol of Lincoln Electric's commitment to renewable energy. Welding is an integral part of wind tower fabrication, and providing reliable solutions for this growing industry is more important than ever. With over a century of experience in welding consumables, machines, and techniques, Lincoln Electric has developed the expertise from the past to provide the best solutions for the future.